I'd like to go ahead and call the meeting to order for the Pueblo Nation Business Committee Saturday, November 20th. Uh, the time is 9.12 a.m. Uh, so at this time, uh, Michelle, can you lead us in a word of prayer? Thank you, Lord, for this day, and I thank you, Lord, for each one here. I pray, Lord, that you'll help guide and direct this meeting, and then, Lord, for the betterment of our tribe and the decisions and the actions, Lord, that are taken today, and, and not just today, but every day. And, Lord, I just pray that you'd be with those, Lord, that aren't here, whether they're sick or they were um, or whatever is going on in their life. I just uh, thank you, Lord, for this week and the holiday coming up. And I just pray, Lord, that those that are traveling you know, for safe mercies and that families can come together, Lord, and, and have a great time together. Yes. We just love you, Lord. We thank you. We ask, Lord, you help God to do this meeting. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, at this time, roll call and declaration of quorum. Mr. Secretary Treasurer, thank you. Present. Zach. Here. Jeremy. Lloyd. Here. I mark present. Callie. Present. Joseph. Present. Okay, we have a quorum. Thank you, sir. Uh, dropping down, we'll move to the reading, correction, and approval of minutes and phone polls. Get found in your packets. Make a motion. I have a motion to approve by Zach. Okay. Second. Second by Callie. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstention? Mr. Chairman, I abstain on the minutes, and, but I vote yes on the phone calls. Okay. Uh, just so we can clarify that, we have an abstention by Boyd. Uh, for the minutes, uh, but to go ahead and cast his vote for the approval of the phone polls. Any other discussion related to that? I would just say the reason I abstain because I was not present. Okay. No good. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Any abstentions? We have one abstention by Lloyd. Uh, motion carries uh, for the approval. Uh, dropping down approval, disapproval of treasurer's report. Being told we may have an issue of our audio on the Zoom. Can we confirm that by anyone? We're good. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve or disapprove the treasurer's report. So moved. We have a motion by Lloyd. Second. Second by Michelle. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries and the treasurer's report is approved. Uh, dropping down, we have the directors and subcommittees reports submitted. Uh, this month, I requested uh, representatives from our courts as well as our marshals to be here to address uh, really the landscape uh, since uh, the Quapaw Reservation has been reaffirmed uh, following the uh, Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals decision about three weeks ago now. Uh, so if we could, um, however you want to do it, if Carissa would like to go first, uh, go ahead and get started and just give us uh, really an update as to what we're seeing, what you're seeing, and what our current status is. Okay. Good morning. Um, I'm Chris Miller. I am the court clerk for the Quapaw Shrine. So far this month in November, we've seen three dockets. Um, on the 4th, um, which was November 4th, we had six cases. The docket held on November 17th had seven cases. The docket held on November 18th had 11 cases. Um, there were two new attorneys applied for the Bar Association this month and were approved. That moves our number to 64 active members in the Bar. 
So in 2021, we've actually had 24 new bar members apply. So that number has increased um, per previous years. Um, on November 2nd, I had a meeting with a new grant manager as to the special domestic violence criminal jurisdiction grant that we are looking at implementing. Um, and we're also working on a strategic plan with a community needs assessment for tribal members to complete, um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, um, as to what crimes they find to be significant in this area. Uh, on November 3rd, I met with Pueblo Public Schools to go over the recent law form ruling and what changes they're gonna see on the truancy side um, of cases and where those would be filed at and how the process is gonna be with us. And we're gonna to try to keep it the same as the state so nothing um, gets muddy in the water. So it's just the same forms, which is a little bit more information and where the tickets need to go and all those things. I have a meeting um, with Commerce Public Schools because what that does reside within our jurisdiction. Um, that had to be canceled due to my daughter getting COVID, um, so hopefully uh, we'll have that in the next couple of weeks when school's back in session. Um, on November 18th, OILS came in and hosted another Wills Clinic. We are planning on hosting another Wills Clinic at the end of February, early March, so we'll be putting out press for that as well. Um, I also just sent in um, a letter for um, supplemental funding for the courts due to the recent Longhorn matter to see if we could get supplemental funds for different positions and things like that since the court is growing. Um, like you said, on October 21st of 2021, the OCCA affirmed the Quapaw Nation boundaries in the matter of the state of Oklahoma versus Jeremy Longhorn. Since that date, we've had several meetings with the USAO and we are working currently with them um, as to the cases being transferred over from Ottawa County to a file that Ottawa County sends to the USAO. The USAO reviews those cases. They determine which cases they're gonna keep and then what cases are gonna be sent to our file for us to review. Um, so right now, there are about 31 cases that have been reviewed, or are still being reviewed by the USAO. Um, and then 12 of those have been kept by the USAO and 14 of those right now have been sent to us to review, and there's about eight that are sitting in limbo that we're still waiting on a decision on what they're gonna do. Um, they usually typically send me a list of what they're keeping and what's being sent to us about every two weeks, so we're keeping up with them on what needs to be moved, so we can move this pretty quickly. Um, I kind of wanted to give a breakdown of previous years and what the case numbers look like there to what's happened in the past month because there has been significant change with us. In 2019, there were 59 cases filed in the court system. 2020, there were 58 cases that were filed. In 2021, there's been 70 cases. Since October 21st, 2021, there's been one search warrant, seven new criminal cases, which were just brought in on the Marshall side. That's not even from the USAO's office. One deprived, one civil, and three protect orders. So only 13 new cases in less than a month. On average, um, with the previous months, there was about four cases per month that was filed with the court system. The court normally sees about an average of 10 to 12 criminal cases per year. Right now, we have 20 criminal cases that have been filed and there are 19 pending cases for review for the prosecutor to be filed with the courts. So that's about 40 cases in, that could be filed just in this time frame. That's not even the new cases that could be picked up. So criminal cases for 2017, there was five filed. 18, there were six filed. 2019, there were 14 filed. In 2020, there were six cases. Like I said before, there's 20 cases at this time that have been filed, and we have about 19 that we're still waiting on. Uh, we've also seen an increase in protective orders. Um, so 2017, there were two cases. 2018, six protective orders. 2019, four protective orders filed. 2020, three cases. In 2021, we've seen an increase of 12 cases. Last docket alone, there were five protective orders cases that set on that docket. We have a list that I sent out to the marshals um, as we get protective orders um, so they can see what we have active, and they also get those orders or final orders for their office to hold them. So we're trying to hurry with the domestic violence court because we are seeing an increase with protective orders because that deals with harassing, stalking, um, domestic violence, sexual harassment, and different things like that. 
Um, right now for December, Judge Hammonds has five cases that are set. Judge Douthat has six cases, and Judge Casey has nine cases. And each of those dockets, those are completely unrelated cases. So there's, each of them are seeing different cases per docket. Um, Judge Casey, who's only been with us for two dockets, right now is carrying the biggest caseload. Um, things just happen to fall on his docket. Um, we had two individuals get arrested um, Wednesday night. He had a docket Thursday, so we added those quickly so we could get an arraignment in as fast as we could to get them what we need to, what process we need to get done quick. Um, so right there is a total of 20 cases that will be heard as of right now, just in December. That's nothing pending more than 19 cases that we still have waiting for the prosecutor to review. Um, we also are, have been in talks with the, the five tribes um, as to some different juvenile centers and um, gels to see how they're working with things. And uh, Julio got to meet with them this week and kind of do like a planning thing with them to see what their, what their goals look like also in the next few months. at this time I think more so than anything it's a comment uh, offer a little bit of commentary on this uh, yourself along with others uh, within the court system has have been working diligently preparing for this moment for the last uh, year a little over a year now and now that the time has come um, there there is a little nervousness to it just because you know 114 years of criminal jurisdiction now shifts to us as well as the federal government uh, it's going to be a learning curve uh, but I, I just want to say uh, thank you uh, for your work on this as well as the others uh, staff uh, this is no this is this is quite a challenge I'll say that uh, but I very confident in our ability to meet that challenge. Uh, we'll continue to plug along and, and chug away at it. Uh, and I appreciate um, you getting us the, the new additions for the job uh, duties and responsibilities laid out. Those of all, uh, they have all been yet but approved, uh, let's say. And, um, you know, really fortunate to be able to address that in a quickly, timely manner, uh, the number that we're seeing uh, continue to increase. So I just want to say thank you for those numbers. Uh, we'll continue the dialogue and continue the communication on a weekly basis. And uh, I do have a quick question, and this is more for the audience in the room and on Zoom. Um, the USAOs, what did they do with Lawborn? They kept it. Yes. And those other two as well? Yes, they did. So the three major ones that we had at the um, Criminal Appeals Court, all three of those are right now being part of them. Okay. Those are the first ones I asked to make sure. Yeah. So. And those are the ones that were asked of me is like, okay, now you have this lewd molester uh, free, what happens? And Josh may be able to add some color to that too. Uh, but that's kind of where I was with it. It's like, yeah, the USAOs are going to pick it up. They're going to do their, their job. So. There were definitely some surprises on my end on some of them that weren't getting picked up. Um, but we'll take those on and do what we need to do. But, um, but those top three, I definitely, those were the first questions I asked to make sure that those were definitely going to go through there. So. Good. All right, and thank you for the nice words for Truman. Um, as most of you know, he did pass away. Um, I was able to go to a service, which was nice. Um, I think you you work with individuals and you only see the surface of a person. You don't really sometimes get to dig deep. Um, I worked with him for four and a half years. He was very loved throughout his community. Um, Arvo, who is the Western uh, in the Western District District's um, attorney's office, spoke at his service. Um, not only did he do thing, great things throughout the state of Oklahoma, I mean, he definitely taught me a lot of tribal law and the importance of it and the importance of sovereignty. Um, so thank you for, for the nice kind words that you spoke of him. So.
We appreciate it. Thank you for bringing that back up. So, and um, Judge Duffett um, is retiring um, from all of his duties. Um, so we will be celebrating him in the next few weeks for all of the things that he has done with us over the past um, 11 years. So thank you again. Thank you, Chris. Hi, Josh Lewis, I'm the head of the Marshal's office. Um, just to address Lawhorn first, since it was brought up, uh, a warrant for him from the feds actually came to my office uh, late this last week, so we will be picking him up uh, later next week. We should be able to get him picked up and returned to, uh, to custody for the federal side so that they can proceed. Uh, other than that, um, fortunately for us, it's not a huge, vast change because from the beginning of when we set this up, we set it up to be able to basically handle all the cases regardless of what jurisdiction they go to in-house. Um, so we worked from the beginning from our guys making sure that they're commissioned with both the states that we work in, the tribe of course, and also through the feds. Um, so for us, the, the biggest change that we've seen with going through this process is one, we've seen an increased caseload. Um, this last month that we've been in this, that's what uh, calls for service was, was 337, which is roughly a hundred call in, a hundred call increase. Um, so we're still kind of assessing as to what it's going to look like going forward in regards to how much of an actual increase of workload we're going to be dealing with. Um, we have had some cases that kind of came up during this time frame that were not specifically as a result of this because they would have been in our jurisdiction anyways that caught the news uh, those have been kind of actually went really well um, this has increased our partnership with the fbi uh, we actually have a working relationship and have had for a long time with most of our federal partners uh, including the u.s attorney's office i mean we've worked with them for years uh, shannon's been somebody that i mean and we've had her down since the rulings came down, I think we've had her down at least three times now. Uh, not just meeting with us, but also meeting with our state partners. Uh, because mainly the state entities that we're looking at that have uh, interest in, in the reservation is obviously Ottawa County, the Sheriff's Office, it also Miami PD has some, uh, some of their city limits that actually comes up into the reservation area. The City of Commerce, uh, we've met with GRDAs, uh, higher ups, we've met with uh, OHP to discuss, you know, kind of how to work things out from their side going forward. Um, so we're working on things with them. We've been working with legal as far as you know, documentation to be able to get part or that partnership kind of solidified to uh, make things work a little more smoothly. Uh, in the meantime, our guys have been handling the caseload that comes in. Uh, we haven't seen any issues as a result of that yet. But like I said, I mean. It is. It has been an increase, and in, in the workload that the guys are taking on. Um, as we've run across issues that come up, or things that maybe we weren't quite aware of as possibly being issues, we've been able to work with you guys as far as bringing those to you guys' attention as to kind of what our needs are. We appreciate you guys' you know quick responses as far as being able to help us you know kind of navigate through that stuff. Um, one of the things that I mean. I didn't take into consideration because that's what everybody knows. We offer an SRO uh, program through Quapaw Schools. Well, now we're taking on Commerce Schools, so that's one of the deals that we want to address as far as trying to get something similar set up for that facility so that we have a, a working relationship with that school like what we have with the Quapaw Public Schools. Um, but like I said, most of ours things are going pretty much similar to the way that they are other than the increased caseload. Um, I have, we recently set up a, a newer partnership with the ATF and the FBI were working on getting one of our guys set up to do the uh, Safe Trails Task Force with those guys, so he'll be a task force officer with them. Um, his focus primarily will be domestic violence and uh, sexual assault cases, um, both of which are things that we deal with in our, in our jurisdiction. And unfortunately, I mean, we have seen a need for having somebody more specialized in focusing just on those. So that's why I'm like, we're going to have one that, I mean, that's going to spend more time doing that specifically. Mm -hmm. but you guys have any questions?
I have a question in the back, yeah. Yeah, I've got one question. Uh, has there been any consideration of maybe nine tribes getting a joint uh, grant from the federal government and maybe building a federal jail here in the county? I mean, now, I know everything's new. This all becoming federal now, but that's just a thought. <laughs> right. Um, that's what. So incarceration isn't exactly specifically my forte. We kind of handled them prior to that side of it. Um, obviously, bedding, beds are an issue as far as that goes. Um, actually, Carissa with the courts has done a great job with working with entities around us that we can partner with to assist with taking care of that. And I know that they continue to try to find suitable situations for that. As far as whether or not the other tribes have spoke together about something like that, that would probably be more something for the business committee. So I can tell you that uh, there is an interest uh, with the nine tribes in this area to do some type of joint venture uh, for a detention center. Um, interestingly enough, there is also interest uh, from the same group to do uh, a court system as well as law enforcement to try and either enhance what is already available through the CFR courts and the BIA marshals or to somehow take that over and have the tribes assume that and that's still kind of in flux right now in the conversation i because we are one of nine of intertribal council member tribes i, I said that we had a definite interest in beds and containment centers and that that sort but you know we we are very fortunate to already have a really developed uh, marshal service a developed court system so we're kind of uh, in a different uh, I guess level of where we are in terms of our public safety than the rest of them but I can tell you that we're still committed to try to get federal funding somehow some way any way we can uh, and then there's also interest from uh, the five tribes as well like Carissa had mentioned maybe doing a joint venture uh, for a detention center somewhere in Muskogee, I believe it was. Uh, so there is there is interest of having some type of joint venture. It just uh, we when the time comes, we need to figure out if it's right for us and what we can do. But we're we're casting a wide net right now on the federal on the federal funding side of things. So, so we do have agreements. We have agreements with Craig yeah. County, Kay County, and the South. Uh, the detention center we did look at was a 10-bed detention center, so it wasn't as big as we thought going looking at it. Um, but I know that Muskogee County Sheriff's Department and commissioners are wanting to work with tribes um, as well. So. And I think the Miami tribe also, um, they say they donated like $2 million. $2, two million for the renovation of the county facilities. Uh, and again, I've kind of been not in those conversations, so I don't know. Uh, my, my appetite for renovating a really old building is not as great as having a state-of-the-art facility where all the nine tribes can go and have their own, something to call their own. Which, and just to build off of what he was saying, uh, on the law enforcement side, out of the nine tribes that are in this area, only five of them have their own law enforcement. The rest actually require or rely on BIA to take care of them. And then there's also something to be said about the type of uh, reservation claim that they're asserting. Um, I won't get into the all of the details of, of criminal law, but um, theirs is off of a post-conviction, if I'm not mistaken. So that one actually, one of them actually came back where it was denied. Um, there we go. So right now there are, Ottawa's have three cases that are pending at the a criminal appeals court. Miami Nation and Peoria have um, one that are together, and then the Eastern Shawnees. So as of right now, those are the only criminal cases that I've been able to research that are, um, I know other tribes have said they have some, but when I've talked to Ottawa County DA, those are the only ones that are actually physically sitting in the criminal appeals court as of 10-21-21. So. so, I mean, 
All that to say, our, our reservation claim was a lot stronger, uh, not just based off of the history of our treaties, but also uh, because it had yet to be adjudicated. It was still in the, in the process of being adjudicated at the Oklahoma Criminal Appeals Court. And the other cases, uh, it's for post-conviction, so I, I don't want to say that their, their reservation status or their reservation claim uh, was weaker. It's just that ours was stronger given the timing and given the history of our treaties. And I will say ours started in December of 2020. So it did take from December 2020 going into the criminal appeals court until October 21st of 2021 for a decision to be made. So this isn't something that happens quickly. Good question. Uh, any, any other comments for Josh? Ms. Gracie? I'm, I'm not sure where to direct my question, but the Pope I had a case pending against John Barry at all. Is there any news on that? So that is in the tribal court. Uh, I do not have any news on that. Does the tribal court have any news? It, it's still pending. Um, there was hearing November 4th on it, and the judge is um, having to rule on a few things. So at this time, it's still active. Uh, Josh, I don't have any other questions, just more um, commentary. Um, say thank you for your effort on this. Um, again, we're, we're kind of in uncharted waters. Uh, there's a lot to pick up on and a lot to address. There's uh, things that come up like we've been anticipating for the last year and a half to, to be able to cover some of these things. And then once you're encountered with something, it's like, oh, I didn't really think about it like that, but yeah, we can we can do that. We can address that. Uh, mine was uh, the truancy part of all of this. You know, I, I hadn't realized the role that that plays in the bigger part of it. So uh, we'll get there. Yeah, and I we appreciate you guys working with us on it. That's what I'm like. I mean, that is one of the things that we have ran across some some holes. And you guys are doing a great job of assisting us with getting those kind of taken care of before we end up with with the issues in regards to them. Well, uh, if we can continue to do that, uh, please send your recommendations and your changes our way, and uh, keep the open open door dialogue happening. So, absolutely. Uh, which I'd like to bring up. I believe uh, Callie actually mentioned it to me prior to the meeting that I believe the shop with the cop is on the agenda, I believe under donation. Um, I don't know that we send it, we send it differently than what we normally do. Normally we send that to the two casino facilities for them to fund and take care of. So I don't know if it needs to be done differently. Because um, I believe this year, uh, the officer actually just sent it to Ann to kind of get with him in regards to it. Um, but that's our program that we use, that we take the uh, kids from Quapaw schools and we take them and do, you know, kind of a, a shopping deal with those funds and take them to the, to the store with an officer. I, I think we're um, all on the same page. We'll, we'll approve that today or send it back and do the appropriate thing and have it approved from the casino side. I believe that's what we discussed. Um, but thank you for getting that to us. The only question I had about it was what's the date? Uh, I believe that what we said was December 15th, but I can't. I don't, want to, I don't want to say that that's a hard date. Okay. Are, are we going to do anything with Commerce this year since they're in our district now or just, just swap off? So that's what, as of right now, that's what I'm like where we don't have anybody in the school. That's what I'm like we have not worked out anything with them. Um, I believe Commerce has a program over there in place. So without going over there and kind of stepping on their toes, that's what I'm like we'll probably wait and kind of see what their setup is. And I just to add a little color to that, I normally wouldn't mind doing that kind of just saying hey you know we're a nation we're here we've been here but their sro is through an agreement with another uh, sister tribe right so i definitely want to respect that government to government relationship tribal to tribal uh, but we'll, we'll work it out absolutely yeah. okay. appreciate right. it thank you Yes, sir. Yes, I'd like to ask Josh. I have a friend who's a game warden, and he 
John made contact with him about cross deputization or stuff. I don't know. The local game work. Yeah, we, uh, he, he reached out to me. I've got all the stuff to Josh, and uh, we, we've been in contact with him this, this week. Yeah. yeah we're, we're, we're working that out right now. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, good reports there. The next up is our accounting report, Mr. Eric Boone. Don't forget we need to approve the a report. Oh, okay. Next. Uh, let's back up a second. Um, let's go ahead and do the approval, disapproval of directors and subcommittee reports as submitted. Move to approve. We have a motion to approve by Guy. Second. Second by Lloyd. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Any abstentions? Motion carries and the reports are approved. Okay, dropping down to the accounting report, our CFO, Mr. Eric Boone. Good morning. Good morning. My report is not that exciting. Um, October marked the first month of our new fiscal year. Um, we received revenue of 1.5 million. Our expenses were 1.67 million. Uh, our tribal member health benefit. Um, expenses were 293000 our social services payments for October were 191000 and our education payments, we made payments in October, but they were really, for the fall of 21, they were just those remaining applications that were mailed before the end of September, but we didn't receive them until October, it was 31000 So, like I said, that marks our first month, and um, I anticipate the numbers to grow um, as we continue to roll out new programs and, and funding. So, um, does anybody have any questions? I like it when you shake your head no. <laughs> no, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we may have questions if the subject of a Christmas party comes up, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> uh, good report, thank you, sir. Uh, next up are subcommittee reports and elders committee, Ms. Gracie Good Eagle. time to call in uh, so that you can record your family history, uh, your stories. Um, we will be uh, drawing the name uh, for a gift at that time as well. Uh, the big news, well, kind of a carry on. Um, Papa Day, we thank you very, very much because the elders were able to get together uh, we had several elders who came uh, and were part of that, and it was good that uh, lunches were brought up to us and provided, so we did have some additional time together. But part of that was to discuss, again, uh, stories uh, of the couple ways and just family stories as well. Um, since then, we have heard from, the, uh, from Billy, Billy Bertram, as far as the youth. Uh, tonight is games night, and um, she definitely has been in touch with the elders uh, committee because we are very much thinking of intergenerational, of wanting to be closer together. Uh, the young people and the programs that they have, and then also our elders, of uh, getting us together uh, as often as we can. So. Uh, the, the games planned for tonight, and so everyone is welcome to, to come. Uh, the other news from that was um, 
On December 4 will be the Christmas parade in Papa at 12 noon. And the youth are hoping to have a float. And they said, and you, as the elders would like to ride on the float that Billy needs to know. Or uh, to me, and I can pass that on. <coughs> How long has it been since you've ridden on the float in the Christmas parade? So anyway, that offer is there. And so I'll leave more news up to you guys. Uh, to codify and to 
um, better clarification of those rules to be codified into our governing document, which brings me to the request for uh, the survey to be done and uh, the committee members to um, do uh, a log, a month's log, to help us out with those rules. Um, if you haven't done it, please get that back to us. I'll include that in a follow-up email after this. Um, and uh, everybody could expect a draft to be presented at General Council um, of this year of, of our progress so far. And other than that, our next meeting is the 11, uh, 11.27. Uh, we changed our meeting times to Saturdays to accommodate a member. And due to attendance, we're moving our meeting back to where um, everybody else could make it to the meeting because uh, we all find it better to be on, on our original date. Um, and other than that, we have, uh, we're going to be meeting about every two weeks uh, going forward. Uh, we've got a lot to uh, start covering and putting into, into writing. Um, so if there's any assistance that the business committee can, can get to us in, in the way of bodies, that would be uh, greatly appreciated. Uh, I know we've talked about it. And I just want to continue to put that out there. But other than that, that's, uh, that's all I've got. We have a short list and recommendations we've kind of been kicking around uh, amongst the BC, and we'll be happy to get with you after this on our Amazing. Thank you. Uh, no other questions for Roman? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks for that update. Um, dropping down to new business, uh, we have uh, resolution 11 2021A, which is a resolution enacting the Papua Nation Registry of Historic Places. Uh, put this forward uh, this month, not just because it's Native American Heritage Month, but uh, also because uh, it seems like something that this tribe could really benefit from. Uh, the advantage uh, is going to be tenfold, especially with our reservation being reaffirmed uh, earlier this month. Uh, it's a good thing. It's a good piece of law, and I'm happy to bring this forward. Um, so I'll, I'll entertain a motion to adopt. Move to adopt resolution 112021A. We have a motion to adopt. I have a second. Motion by Guy, second by Cali. Any discussion? Yes, Mr. Chairman, question. Yes. Under definitions 3, 10, it says place for I think it's supposed to be refers to an identifiable location at which an event occurred or a location given significance by football action or belief. I believe there's two, two typos in that sentence. Okay. We will make those changes, make those amendments to what you say, three and ten. And it should be re reverbs, should be refers, an event should, uh, even should be event. Okay. In my defense, I wrote this at 2 in the morning. <laughs> but I'll take it. I guess you know I read it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, those changes are tracked. We'll make those appropriate changes. Uh, thank you. Any other discussion? That I would call for the question. All for the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstention? The motion carries and resolution is adopted. Um, yeah, no. uh, resolution number one one two zero two one B. This resolution is designating the Papua Nation representatives to the National Indian Gaming Association, NIGA. Uh, the two representatives will be myself and Josh Seiler. Move to adopt. Second. We have a motion by Guy and a second to adopt. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstention? 
abstained by Cali. Um, motion carries and the resolution is adopted. Moving down to purchases.
we'll just um, refer those back to each of those uh, organizations and um, no action will be taken on this item today. Um, donation request from uh, the Ottawa County Santa program. Uh, I believe Zach, you had more detail. If you could please. <clears throat> Uh, Jerry reached out to me Thursday on this. He is out of town right now, so couldn't be here in person. Uh, this started in 1979. Uh, they've been doing it ever since. Uh, basically, they uh, gather money and toys, have auctions to raise money. Uh, they provide uh, Christmas dinners for families and uh, presents for kids that are uh, in low-income families and, and can't get presents. They do that through, uh, this year they're going to do a drive-through due to COVID. That's how they done it last year as well. We'll do a drive-through gift pickup. And he is asking, he does not have an amount requested. So, so this is going for toys and I guess other clothing items? Yeah. Yeah. Toys, clothing, and then they, they provide dinners for probably five different families for Christmas. Is that something we normally give to? Uh, we've done it in the past, I believe. We've done this. I'll move to donate five hundred dollars. Motion to uh, mo motion to accept the request at five hundred dollars. Second. Uh, motion by Guy. Second by Callie. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstention? Aye. Uh, we have one abstention by Zach. And motion carries and the request is approved for $500 for the Ottawa County Center program. Uh, next up, uh, Anna Lee Johnson Jennings Zanzibar internship. Details is an internship in Zanzibar in Tanzania from January 4th to March 12th. Uh, and the funding request is for $400. Uh, and the Papa Nation will receive thank you notes, uh, social media recognition. And this is already uh, one of our tribal youth that has been involved in uh, with um, help and assisted along her educational development and success. So, how uh, did you guys go to an Ivy League school? So, with that, I'll entertain a motion to accept the request, approve the request. Move to accept. I have a motion by Guy. Second. Second by Michelle. Any discussion? Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstention? An abstention. Uh, we have one abstention by Callie. Uh, yeah, motion passes and the request is accepted or approved for four hundred dollars. Uh, going back to the Kimberly Chase Cancer Fundraiser. This is uh, the Fairland uh, J O M program. Helps Native students. Uh, the requester is on the parent committee and has cancer. Uh, the, the, the details of the event that they're requesting funding for is December 1st, uh, Chili Feed 
uh, with a Facebook auction and t-shirts sale, excuse me. Um, a list of donations will be highlighted um, and as well as the event, uh, the, the donors will be highlighted and then all proceeds go to the individual. Here I move to approve the amount request of one hundred dollars. We have a motion to approve the request at a hundred dollars. The second. Um, motion to approve by Boyd, second by Cali. Uh, any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all those opposed? Any abstention? Motion carries and the request is approved. Uh, so moving out of donations, dropping down into the staffing, um, it's listed uh, kind of ambiguously here, uh, new director of Papua Nation Gaming Agency. Um, I, there have been uh, vast changes uh, to the way that uh, we are operating our gaming institutions, our gaming facilities, not just with uh, Downstream, but Wawa Casino as well, and then of course our Saracen property there in Arkansas. And through this uh, change, I guess within the last, well, since August 15th, and even before that, uh, we were involved uh, in a number of uh, a, a number of decisions that needed to be made and through the course of that process uh, there was an individual that uh, really stepped up and went above and beyond uh, what her duties were at that time uh, by filling in as acting director of our gaming agency and uh, she just continued to do an exceptional job of not only working with us and, and finding being able to locate uh, some of those problem areas that that we needed to address uh, but you know there there was a, a cost savings decision that's also uh, to be considered with 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 that position uh, in terms of cost back to uh, the operation side of things. Uh, there's some regulatory, uh, I guess, decisions that that needed to be made. And the person filling in that's been doing all of this work uh, has been good. Uh, there is still a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, and so with that, uh, very comfortable with appointing uh, Aaron Eckert uh, to this position. Uh, I have a lot of faith in her ability to uh, continue to do good work for us. And so that is uh, who you know I'm comfortable with appointing. Uh, we went through a process where uh, the, the business committee uh, held interviews for these uh, for this position. Uh, went through an interview process. They gave me their recommendations on who they thought would be best suited for this. And once it was relayed to me, it was no surprise of, of who the selection was. And you know, it makes sense from uh, from our standpoint, from our perspective, to. Uh, appoint this individual. So, with that, uh, the new director of Qualpa Nation Gaming Agency is Ms. Aaron Eckert. So, just wanted to make that announcement. Uh, and with that, move into open forum. And uh, before we go, uh, turn the mic over and go into open forum. Uh, I would like to acknowledge those individuals who we've lost in the last month since our last business committee meeting. Uh, and those individuals are uh, Josephine Red Eagle,
Sander Dunaway, Gerald Hubbard Jr., and Cheryl Williams. And at this time, if we could keep those individuals in our thoughts and prayer and their families and just continue to lift them up during this time of their grieving process, uh, that's what I ask. Uh, and if we could, please um, allow a moment of silence for these individuals. Uh, number three was the increased work 
to incorporate ecological knowledge in helping to fight climate change. Uh, number four was the protection of the Greater Chaco Canyon. And then five, which is of particular interest, is uh, addressing the crisis of violence against Native Americans, uh, which involves improving public safety in the areas of uh, sex trafficking, sexual assault, and child abuse. And that will be coming through an executive order uh, here pretty soon. And so um, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that's been happening this month. Uh, those being the the biggest, at least in the Quapaw Nation realm. Um, I was requested to give a COVID update. Uh, I know that the the numbers as well as the politics can fluctuate depending on what room I'm in. Uh, so I'll keep it very middle of the road and say that there are boosters uh, that are now available at the local clinic. Uh, both Moderna and Pfizer are available uh, for booster shots. And uh, we have that information posted on our social media uh, as well as our tribal office, if I'm not mistaken. But if not, we can we can pass that relay that information to you that boosters are available and appointments are available too. And the pediatric vaccine, that's correct, ages five, right? Five and up. Can I yeah. give an update on a grant that we just got word on about the vaccinations? Sure. Um, through the library and museum, they got a grant where we're going to be able to hold four uh, vaccination clinics between now and I think the end of February. We're going to start the first one in January, so it's the end of April. Anyway, we met Friday on getting some of the uh, statistics worked out with that. Like there'll be like a Saturday and then we'll do a di uh, day during the week and then we'll do a Saturday and then a day during the week. Should be enough time frame that we can get all things in. We'll have the boosters, whether it's your first shot and we'll have another one so you can get your second shot. We're going to have prizes to give away. We're going to have food. This grant's a pretty broad grant I'm being able to, we've got shirts to give away, other incentive items to have people come in and get the vaccinations. We're going to be holding one here in the community room and then maybe one down at Title VI. Still working out the details, but we've been in contact with the Department of Health, with the clinic, and very well received. Uh, so we'll be able to do them all. So we'll be sending out save the dates, we'll be sending out a mass uh, overload on the uh, social media sites so that we can get people aware it's for anyone, not just tribal members, not just elderly. We'll be able to do the, the age limit for the children and everything. So, And we've got a pretty short turnaround in this grant, so we're going to be pushing pretty fast on it. But that was a a big boost to uh, the county here with getting that grant and helping out, so. Good, good news, Yay. good information, thank you. Uh, so COVID boosters, NTHS, while you're still at the podium. <laughs> uh, Short walk. Can you give us information? I've already been like fundraising and pushing for the Pawpaw Nation Blessing Tree. Uh huh. So doing that, right? Yes, it's already in the works. I've been meeting with Patty, and she's worked with Joita and Blakeney, and we're getting the trees and the things put up. We've opened it up to the whole little area, not just tribal members or not just here. We're, we're broadening that now to the schools and to things, and so they've been working diligently on that, <coughs> and so yeah, it is in the works. Um, yeah. We will, uh, I believe there's going to be a tree. There's one at the museum. We're going to have a tree here, and I believe they're doing one at the Kyoto Center. Perfect. So, yes, Good. it's Covered in the works. Places. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Do you, are, are we thinking, expecting that after Thanksgiving, most likely? Uh, should be. Should there are like I said, we met week before last. We talked about it. I mean, they're already working, so it should be getting out there. Just uh, hopefully next week. Wonderful. Before Thanksgiving. Wonderful. Okay. Yes. Thanksgiving. Before Thanksgiving. When's that? Next week. Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> yeah. Thursday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The offices will be closing Wednesday at 1.30, and then we'll be closed Thursday and Friday, you know. But 
yeah, we'll, we're going to get the blessing tree. We've had a big interest in it, and we're, they're working with the school. They've already sent notices out at the school. They've already been notices sent out with the kids to get names and stuff, and uh, so that we can get the things going. Perfect. Good. Uh, so, just so we're all on the same page, next Thursday and Friday, travel admin offices are closed. Mm -hmm. And then Wednesday, they are open until 1.30? Yes. And we're going to do a, 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 put it on your calendar, I think. We're doing like a hanging of the green, chili feed for everybody that wants to come by and something on that on Thursday in here. Um, so, uh, the elders checks for Christmas, just an update. We've pretty much got all them ready in sand, so they should <coughs> start getting them in the mail week after next. Free play, uh, right? Yeah, free play, yeah. <laughs> Um, and then on the children's Christmas party or gift, we posted the application like we did last year for people to send in to get, I just need you to send me the amount. The amount's not been down <coughs> on, the, on the children. So I just need that and then we can start processing that. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. But we're, we're moving forward here. I have an event that I'm going to put on your radar okay. that I don't think anybody else in this room knows about. Okay. Yeah. So okay. we probably better put that down. Uh, December 6th at the Coleman Theater, we're hosting a film screening of uh, two different films. One is a regenerative land uh, that is that was put in the Hot Springs Film Festival uh, by a, a local a local person a local Arkansas person that came and did interviews and she debuted there. Uh, we're looking at screening, having a screening event during that day but then also um, as part of a uh, cultural archiving project we also uh, put together a short film with a couple of our own uh, tribal veterans that served and we plan on uh, airing that on the same day as well okay. so december 6th, december 6th mark your calendars uh, we'll be sure to have more uh, description and detail uh, after this after this weekend. Okay, great. Sounds awesome. So, all right. Um, we made the announcement on the elders' Christmas. We made the announcement on the children's gifts and the Quapaw Nation blessing blessing tree. I don't have anything else want to announce. Oh, Grace did. This is for your information. Um, we've had a, a long relationship with the groups here with the Tar Creek Superfund. It has been with us now for some years. Along with this has been the uh, lead agency, which is an environmental group, and with our own Quapaw Nation environmental group, Tim and the others. Um, the lead agency had a conference recently, uh, October 26th through the 28th. Uh, during that conference, uh, awards were given out. Um, some of those awards uh, went to our own Quapa Nation in recognition of some of the work that they have been doing. Um, one is through the, uh, was to Kathy, at the environmental office, uh, T.C. Bear, and Grace Goodyear. So we received awards at that conference. And so I just wanted to pass that on. Well-deserved. Uh, we plan on doing a highlight or uh, some type of piece on those awards in recognition of that honor. So thank you. Announcements, discussions. Mr. Ellen. I just have a question. So it's under tribal jurisdiction now, and the law, or whatever. Are we able? Would we be able to tax the uh, turnpike to go across our land? <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to show them all our cards yet. <laughs> <laughs> We're picking up what you're putting down, don't worry. There, there are long uh, issues that our people have faced.
based and we're, we're looking at which ones we want to pick up. Which one on the list? Question. Questions or discussions, so I'll take a motion to adjourn. Oh, okay. All right. We are skipping over closed session because we didn't have any requests. Excuse me. There was only one question on the YouTube feed from uh, Callie Flanagan. It's in two parts. I'll quote it here. Yes, is Erin a Quapaw tribal member or is she Cherokee? Mm -hmm. The second part is, I've heard that the BC is transferring leadership titles to the Cherokee instead of Quapaw members. The first question is no, Erin is not uh, Quapaw, she is not Cherokee, uh, she is Wyandotte. And the second part is no. There is no transfer of anything happening. Uh, Nation retains all sovereignty, reserves all rights to carry out its governmental functions. Sorry for the loss of her puppy. Would you mind closing us out in prayer?